Watch punktv.ca for all the best modern rock videos and interviews. So there will be a new, uh, there will be an album coming out. Yeah, uh, we're doing this, uh, this tour, we just started it. We're like a week and a half into it. And we're dry, it's a driving tour, eh? Eh? And we're driving all the way up to St. John's, Newfoundland, and then flipping the bitch. And then, uh, and then coming back. So one month there, one month back. Taking 10 days off, and then we're back in Europe for uh, the festival circuit. And I told Cameron we're playing a festival with all these punk bands, but they have one novelty band. They dig out an uh, old rock band from the grave. And we're playing on a Saturday night with who? S A T U R D A Y <laughs> night. All right. Bay City fucking rollers. And I'm wearing the outfit, man. Yeah. I'm fucking beating them to the punch. Yeah. That should be fun. Oh, everything's fun. You know? <laughs> be the best asshole you can be. So speaking of fun, um, tell us about the irreverence in your lyrics. I think it's really important. It's always been really important to you to, to add a certain yeah, chai pig you know wit what? to everything you write. Yeah, of course. But, you know, uh, you know, I don't do the, you know, Joey Shithead's a polit He's a musical politician and he's into party politics. But that's always been like an oxymoron with me. How can you party when there's politics <laughs> involved? Not fucking he ran for politics out there, didn't he, in 96? Yeah, but he lost because he's a fucking loser. But uh, <laughs> No, he's not. No, he's a good guy. He's a great, he's a great guy. guy. We love him. Yeah, but uh, his motives are different than mine. I, uh, uh, I, I'm um, more into drama, the theater, and into the concept of things and having fun. And, uh, but you know what? You can't laugh at others before you can laugh at yourself. And I laugh at my fucking self every fucking day, you know? Let's tell us about the Quill Pan story you were telling me about. Uh, is, it, is it true that you're really not a big, big man into possessions and you don't really believe no, in lost, owning anything? I lost everything. I went uh, homeless for about two years. I couldn't handle it anymore. I fucking cracked. I snapped. And uh, that song, Cockatoo Quill, was the lead up to that because I noticed that... Uh, my mode of survival because I was such a recluse at that point in time. I just started selling up, like I had a toy collection of like 3,000 fucking toys. And then on top of that, like 3,000 records and sold it all piece by piece by piece just to stay alive, you know, day by day by day by day. And eventually you wind up with nothing, but it's something, you know, it was, it was like, I learned the hard way. You tell me fucking not to do something, I'm gonna do it. You know, I'm that. I was that kid when you saw a wet paint sign. I fucking had paint on my hand all the fucking time. I was like, I'm touching that shit. You know, don't touch the red button. I'm fucking touching that red button. I'm gonna do it again and again and again until I learn a lesson, right? And that was a hard lesson to learn. And unfortunately, you know. Well, luckily, I, I grew through it and I lived through it, but it hurt at night sometimes when I was alone. And, uh, you know, lost a lot of good writing, lost a lot of great drawings, lost a whole collection, like, you know, of SNFU memorabilia that I probably could have fucking sold on fucking eBay for fucking hundreds of dollars. But you know what? Money doesn't matter to me. Money comes and goes. You know, it doesn't. It, buy, it can buy you comfort, but it doesn't buy you happiness. I wake up, I got some a little bit of coin in my pocket, pack of cigarettes, be able to get some beer, and uh, friends and family and food, and I'm there.
you've ever got time and you check out a vinyl store, do you find yourself wanting to get back into collecting it all or buying a little toy here and there? Yeah, 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 yeah. but you know what? Um, that'll come later when I settle down, but you know, I'm a sugar baby. I was fucking born on, uh, I grew up on like uh, sugar cereals, fucking TV shows. My mom was hardly ever there. God bless her soul. I loved her to death. And, um, and Kool-Aid and, you know, fast food. So, and I was a skateboarder, so everything was fast, fast, fast. You know, we were so poor that my, my grandmother's tits lactated powdered milk. So you still got a sense of humor. No. Tell us, tell us about... That went out the window. Tell us about your hat. Oh, uh, uh, actually, I bought... This was a birthday gift to myself. Uh, mm, no, I, uh, that's, not, that's not true. About a year ago, we were here, and uh, there's a place called Sanctuary up on White Avenue. Great store. And I bought the hat. And I never spend money on... I rarely spend money on... Back then, I rarely spent money on clothes. It cost 35 fucking dollars, right? And I had an anxiety attack. Like, I can't believe I just wasted $35 on a fucking Wookiee hat. Like, but, but, you know, sometimes you got to take an e-walk on the wild side. And, uh, yeah, and, 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 and it's weird because, okay, I'm feeling guilty about spending $35 on a fucking hat. But I'll easily shell out two hundred dollars for crack in one night. <laughs> How fucked up is that? But those days are gone. Those All days. done. You're also. That's the only time I say no. Never. I hurt myself too much. I put myself through the thick and thing. And uh, but I'm still here, and I got fucking friends. And uh, tonight's going to be a wonderful evening. You seem in good spirits. Oh fuck yeah. Fucking 46 years old, I'm still doing this, the love of my life, right? And you know what? It's never say never. And you know that that you know people ask me like, uh, oh, so when's SNFU gonna be over? You know that saying when pigs fly, it's when pigs die. Like when the pig dies, the fucking man's done. Cause you know, not an ego thing. But would you go see SNFU with a different singer? You check it out, but you probably not like it. So you can't have S and F U without me. And it's not an ego thing, but it's it's fact. And kids, and I, I thank everybody for that, especially Edmonton people. Well, actually, everybody. But uh, this is where we grew up, started. I lived with fucking my sister here for years, and uh, Mr. Cameron Noise. He still owes me back rent, by the way. I'm waiting <laughs> for that twenty-five dollars for the gas bill, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's it been, 20 years? All right, and I guess you're also in a movie. They made a documentary about you. You're that big and famous? No, I'm, I'm infamous. I, uh, you know, I tell a good story, and I'm a good listener, and I like talking to people. And you know what? Here's the weird thing is, uh, you know, okay, let's say you sign an autograph for somebody or you take a picture with them, right? And somebody who's envious, like in an opening band or whatever, hypothetically speaking, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> they see you signing it, he's a rock star asshole because he's signing autographs. But if you don't sign it for the fan, you're a rock star asshole. So I'm going to be a fucking rock star asshole and I'm doing it for the fucking fans because without you guys, there's no me, you know? And I'll fucking pose for every picture you want. And I, I'm a pretty good poser, eh, Cam? <laughs> hey, Cam? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rock! Watch punktv.ca for all the best modern rock videos and interviews.